In the last segment, we talked about net ionic equations and the fact that this is new. Okay, so you're going to need to predict your products and write your balanced equation and then ask yourself, well, what is the nature of my substance? Is it a solid? Is it going to be aqueous? Is it going to be a gas? What is it? Then if it's ionic, you have to write it as ionic. And then you have to cross out whatever there is as a spectator. Okay, section 6 begins with the last one on page 9, which I filled in for you. KOH plus H2SO4. K plus SO4 2 minus means that K2SO4 is a product. H plus OH minus means that water is a product. Okay, balance it, and then you're ready to move forward. KOH is ionic and soluble. That's the whole reason that we separated it. So you're going to have 2K plus 2OH minus sulfuric acid, 2H plus SO4 2 minus. Check your solubility table. You'll see that potassium sulfate is aqueous, which means 2K plus SO4 2 minus. Water is water. Water cannot be aqueous. It's going to be a liquid. Your spectators, K plus, your sulfate, K plus, your sulfate. And what you see at the end of the day is when you take this acid plus this base that you are really creating 2H plus, 2OH minus, and you're going to form water. And you would ask yourself, well, this is going to look like water. This is going to look like water, 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 water. Everything's going to look like water. So how do you know that you are really forming water? Well, you have an acid and a base, and you're going to feel heat. Your heat is your indicator that you are actually creating some kind of chemical change. Now, you're going to have an opportunity to practice this with the lab that we're going to do. So you can go to the lab folder, if you wish, and get that sheet and work on it, or try any other problems that I've asked you to work on. Page 10 begins with the mole concept and atoms. Okay, so you need to go back to your textbook and watch any videos that I've given you about the mole. This should not be new. Please go to your book and try some problems on the mole. Please do at least 10. Pause the video here if you need to. Okay? This is where all of this really rolls into a lot of math. Okay? So, what we need to do is to actually see how all this fits together. By the way, I'm going through some old notes and I'm finding some practice problems here. So if you would like to pause the video and give these a stab, you can feel free to do that, if that's helpful. Okay, so I will upload these uh, along with the notes. Okay, so sorry for the tangential aside. Okay, so mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, and usually and typically I round it off to just 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd whatevers equals one mole of whatever. And this brings us back to the idea of atomic mass and mass number. Atomic mass is the mass of an atom. And this is in some sort of AMU, and you get that from the periodic table. So let's say, for example, you have carbon, and it's element 6, and you see 12.01. So the atomic mass of carbon is 12.01 AMU. Okay? 
Now your mass number is the number of neutrons plus protons that you see on your nuclide symbol. So carbon 12, carbon 13, carbon 14. This has a mass number of 12, this is 13, and this is 14. Your atomic mass of 12.01 AMU means that most of what you see in the world around you has a mass of 12.01, but this is the weighted average of these three. Now remember that the AMU is vanishingly small. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 1, 6, 6, 1 grams. Okay, so don't get it confused. An AMU is a derived unit, and it's so small that you can't use it in practice. So what you do is you go to your periodic table, you look it up, and you find the atomic mass. Okay, so you, so you go to the periodic table, and the atomic mass of chlorine is 35.5. We're going to round off as a matter of standard practice to the tenth of a gram. Atomic mass of potassium, 39.1 AMU, again from the table. And you can do this all day long. But how relevant, or should I say practical, is one puny atom? Well, that's rhetorical. It's not. So what you need to do is multiply up and get a huge pile of them so that you have something that's going to have some mass. And that will be a mole of that whatever. So Avogadro's number is a mole, and it's the number of atoms in 12.00 grams of carbon-12, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And this should remind you of conversion factors. Anytime you see an equality, it's a conversion factor. So conceptually, if there's a mole of something, then there is presumably something with enough mass that you can actually measure it. So molar mass is grams per mole. We're going to have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms or whatever and it's going to have some mass. Now, happily, atomic mass and molar mass are numerically the same. The units are vastly different. You cannot weigh this, but you can weigh a gram. Okay? So again, you go back to your periodic table, and you can figure this out. Okay? So... Get your periodic table, and you would see that the atomic mass is 118.7 AMU. You multiply up by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and its molar mass is 118.7 grams per mole. Bromine, 79.9 AMU, 79.9 grams per mole. Copper. 63.6 .6 AMU, 63.6 .6 grams per mole. Okay, now you can do this for every element in the periodic table. The question for the next segment is how do we use this in calculations? And this is going to require you to convert, so make sure that you have your calculator handy. And I will show you how to do this to solidify what you did from your book.